is Jason King, and I am a publisher. Um, the publishing house that I have is uh, Mortal Works. So. Sorry, I've lost my name. Tent. Uh, I'm Brett Hellquist. Um, I'm a book illustrator, do a lot of middle grades, and done a lot of covers. My name is Cedar Sanderson. I am an author, an artist, and more importantly than the cover art, sometimes I'm a cover designer. Okay. Um, like I said, my name is Bryce. Uh, I'm an author and I'm also a publisher. I uh, publish a little uh, pulp action adventure magazine. So that's where I guess we all come from. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Um, I would like to start with the softball question. Uh, but if you answer in rhyming couplet or with a good metaphor, <laughs> I will give you extra points. How important is cover art? Well, go ahead and jump in however you want. <laughs> Nay, there is nothing greater than the cover upon which your book is wrapped. Two points to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think cover is vital. I mean, I just from my own experience, uh, you know, the books, the, the cover's the thing that draws the reader's attention from across the room, or if it's on a, you know, a table with a pile of other books in a bookstore, you know, we all need things to help us know what to grab, and a strong cover can be that thing sometimes, and um, I think if nothing else, a good cover has just got to grab some attention away from everything else, and... Because, you know, to sell a book, we need somebody to pick up a book and consider a book. And and so I think it does a great deal. I think it's really important. Okay. People say they don't judge a book by its cover. They lie. They all do. <laughs> I've had um, I've written a number of articles about cover art and the importance of design and cover art and being specific to your genre and I always have a comment that comes up and goes oh well I never look at the cover of the books and I'm like then how do you find them yeah, especially online when it's matched in with a million other covers that if it if it sticks out in a bad way there's just no way anyone's ever gonna read your blurb or anything <laughs> All right. Um, legal concerns. We'll do the next one. It will be a boring question, but that's while everyone is still taking notes, so it's very important. What legal things um, should authors, artists be aware of when they're looking to, to work together to do cover art? I think with my personal experience, I'm legally not allowed to go within a thousand yards of Brandon Sanderson's house. <laughs> So, oh, about That's cover art. Cover art <laughs> legal concerns. Sorry. Uh, I think with anything, you just have to have a contract that outlines expectations and pay, compensation, you know, and everything else. Just make sure that you, you know, you could do the handshake deal, I guess, but uh, that's really risky, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Contracts are good for any kind of working relationship. What kinds of things do people need to look out for in contracts? Or are, are, are artists going to demand in a contract? What are they going to? It's me on a cover. If it's just a cover job, it's just a straight. Uh, um, I, I will produce a cover for this book, and, and once it's approved by the editor, I'll be paid this much, and then there's a... You know, clause in there that says that the uh, work is original and that I haven't stepped on anybody's copyright in what I'm doing and uh, vouching for that. And so for cover art, it's very simple for me because uh, there's no royalties involved on just a cover art job. It's just a upfront payment. It's just a payment for some work done. Okay. And uh, so it's more just a simple agreement of the work I'm going to do, how much I'm going to get paid for it. And then sometimes uh, with there's also usually some agreement about if the book is if the book and the art is sold to a foreign publisher what the agreement is there of what portion of that i'll take and what i'll get in that situation okay. uh, but there's not a lot there's there's nothing about rights and another thing because like the cover art it's just a it's just a payment for a job done there's no royalty it's, okay yeah 
So there's a couple of ways to come at the legality of it, and one is that they both mentioned contracts, and you have to remember that contracts are not just boring legalese, they're there for your protection and for the artist's protection. Um, the other way is, of course, that Im images are subject to copyright, they're intellectual property. I have spoken with an author who grabbed an image off Google and put it on his book cover, and I told him he was going to get into trouble. I was not his cover artist. However, the other thing is if you do hire a cover artist, you want to make sure that the work that they're putting on your book cover is original because it's your name on that cover, not theirs. And if someone comes after your the book for copyright violation, you, the author, are going to be the one that's going to have to deal with that. So you want to worry about the contract and that legality, but you also need to be very conscious of where the image come from and, and copyright. And if you're an indie author and doing your own covers, that's a huge thing that you need to be concerned with. Well, that's like when I'm in my contract, there's always a clause that, that mm -hmm. I have to verify that this work that I'm presenting for payment is <coughs> original and that I haven't infringed on anyone's copyright and that I vouch that I've, uh, you know, to, that's to protect the publisher, and so, you know, yeah. it is something to pay attention to. Um, one thing I've seen appear that a lot of artists have asked for, I'll get to you in a second, James, is that um, artists want to make sure, uh, many of them have asked me um, to put in their uh, that verbiage for them to be able to use that cover art in their portfolio to show other people, um, I don't know. That, that has showed up several times and also depending on where you find the artist make sure that they know what it's for that it's going to be for a product for sale because a lot of them will charge differently depending on what it's going to be used for yeah I've never thought of that using it for a portfolio it has always just seemed like an obvious thing I never it's never been an issue with me so I don't I don't know, but... Uh, well, maybe I've just never worked with a real pro like you, so <laughs> that does seem well, like an no, obvious thing. It might be that I haven't thoroughly read my contracts. I don't know, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen that in one. Uh, I don't think I have, but uh, there are some things that are just kind of industry standard and... Uh, yeah, but I guess as an artist, if there's anything like that that concerns you and you just want to protect yourself, there's no problem putting that in a contract. I think if uh, if that is a concern that you think might be a problem, it's never been one for me. But uh, I know I don't know. I'm not very useful on that question. We had one um, cover that we had a contract with the artist for. It was all original. It was a painted cover. Um, and the artist specifically retains the rights to the actual image. Um, we can use it, you know, for the book wrap, but we can't do anything else with the image. We can't alter it. We can't, you know, um, he's a little bit lenient on promotion. You know, we can use it to promote, but uh, he retains the rights to the actual artwork. So. Okay. Yeah, that's that's usually that's kind of standard too. Just, uh, all right, James, you had a question? That actually was similar to what I was going to ask. Um, how carefully do you define the extent of use of the art as a promotional tool or whatever versus um, how restrictive is it? For example, um, is that cover artist free to resell that art to another person um, or not? And what are the extents that you can use the art promotionally afterwards, or can you just use it for anything you just put on your website as a background? Or? The verbiage in contracts usually deals with exclusivity. Um, and so there's several templates online and whatnot that tell you, or that will give you examples of what to actually say, but in general, the exclusivity, um, what's the, the paragraph in a legal contract called? A paragraph clause. clause. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Not to be confused with Santa Claus. <laughs> Not to be confused with Santa Claus. All right, so when looking for an artist, um, how can you tell a, not just a good artist from a bad artist, but a good cover artist from a bad art, cover artist? Anybody? Well, I think I've never hired, hired an artist. <laughs> <laughs> I think from the publisher's point of view, um, trying to think, we, we had uh, one author who, who wanted to 
test their relative's talent on their cover. Um, now, the, the relative looks like they know what they're doing with, with their craft, but covers are a very different animal for a couple of reasons. It's not just about, well, I can draw, or I can paint, or I can photo manipulate. Um, there's a marketing uh, there's a marketing portion. Uh, well, that's all cover art is, really, is marketing the book. And so um, there's, there's things that need to be taken into account as far as like, what are you trying to achieve with your marketing? You know, who are you trying to reach? You know, um, can you see this image when it's a thumbnail on a website? I mean, just those kinds of things that the artists themselves may not think about because they're, you know, but, and so I mean, that's one thing that we, we definitely look for with Immortal Works is to make sure that uh, our cover artists usually um, have previous history doing covers uh, and they understand some of the basics and the fundamentals, so. So um, this actually goes into what I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, which is there's a difference between a cover artist and a cover designer, because you can have fabulous art, and if the text on the art isn't right for the book, it looks awful. Um, I have seen a book where the author paid um, a top-level professional artist thousands of dollars to have a painting done. He also had the artist do the layout of the text on it, and the book look the book looked amateurish because even though the art was amazing, um, the f text was wrong for the genre, and it's also very specific to subgenres. So if you are publishing romance, the covers are not the same as the the covers for science fiction, and your in your cover artist, um, if they're doing all of the, the layout and design needs to understand subgenre and the beats of every subgenre. Um, and when I get hired to do someone's cover, I go and I look, I compare um, to what's going, what's hot now, not what was hot two, three years ago. I want to know what's selling right now. So I look at the best sellers in that particular subgenre. Okay, so that broaches a, a new good subject. What do you guys think uh, makes for good cover art? What's, how do you know that that was a piece that's definitely good for, to go on a cover? Well, I don't, I don't know about all the subgenres and things because I don't, I mean, I'm asked to, I've been doing this a long time and I'm asked to do a certain type of thing and people have come to me for a, you know, certain stylistic thing. So I, so I don't know about all that, but I, I, I think that's definitely good good thinking. But with me, when I'm asked to do a cover, what I'm looking for is just a... What I really go for is I just go for a really strong composition that can be seen easily from across the room or in a small thumbnail <laughs> online, and I do that by just, you know putting the picture as far away from me as I can constantly and just trying to look at it. Is it strong enough? Is it simple enough? Can I make it a little more? Can I make that main subject stand out a little more? Uh, so is that what you mean by strong composition? Yeah, yeah, just as the main goal is just making that thing stand out in a bunch of other covers. And and for me, that just simple design things, making that contrast right and the color combination right and getting the value, the light and the dark right. and and just really fussing with it until it just is uh, really strong that way. Because, you know, like I say, if, you don't, if somebody doesn't notice your book enough to pick it up, you, you don't have a chance, you know. So, so that's what I aim for when I do a piece of cover art. Jason? Sometimes I succeed. <laughs> I haven't seen your stuff, but I'm sure it's awesome. So, um, Well, I think that... I forgot the question. How can you tell what is good cover art? If it's good, a good piece to use for a cover, or a good if it's been done well. Um, at least for us, it's and it's probably different because I don't know if, if you've dealt with publishers or directly with authors or both. Um, actually, my I just deal with publishers, so you probably have probably an easier experience. I don't know. Um, Good cover art, basically, in my mind, it, the whole purpose of it is just to get people to pick up the book and to want to buy it. That are intrigued by the cover, they want to find out what the story is. Um, I know that as a publisher, we've run into some issues where we try to give our authors um, some input into their cover. Um, just to, well, most of the founders of our company were authors, and so we kind of understand that's an important thing. But we've also learned that um, in the end, it's just a marketing decision. 
And so the, the cover has to, to be designed to meet those key results for the marketing, basically just to get someone to buy. Uh, so it's, it's a hard balance because you have um, the author who wants, um, may have a specific thing in their mind, you know, um, and so that's why we kind of tell our authors in the end, you know, we make the final decision because, and speaking also of myself, authors are terrible cover designers. I'm sorry, but uh, they suck at it. Because, um, and, and me too. Like when I, when I, if someone wants to do my cover, uh, I actually was in charge of one of my covers for a book um, that I wrote, and it was the worst decision ever. My, my people tried to tell me it was, but I was like, no! You know, I want this cover because it's perfect for my book, and it, it sucked. So, I mean, the cover art was fantastic, but as far as like achieving that marketing goal, um, it, it was a really terrible decision. So, from now on, whenever I have a book that comes out through a <laughs> publisher, I recuse myself from the, the decisions, <laughs> and I leave it to other people because it's just really intoxicating and makes you stupid. So. Uh, I'll, I'll add to that, though, that if you're an author and you're going to be directly hiring a cover artist rather than working through a publisher, you actually have to put on a publishing hat and you have to learn what makes a good cover art and what makes a good cover design so that you can tell if what's being put in front of you is good cover art. Um, so you, I mean, you might not be able to manage the end result yourself, but you need to know that what you're looking at is good. And we have a question back. And like Cedar said, just real quick, you got to do your market research. So. Okay, there in the back. So, uh, I am a cover artist, but I'm new to this. Um, and I am wondering, what sort of uh, communications are, do you expect to have with the artist? What can I, as the artist, do to help the author see their decisions from a new angle? And what can the author do to help me, the artist, get closer to what they want for their marketing? <laughs> So what I usually get from a client when they're hiring me directly, and I work both with authors directly and I work with a couple of small press publishers, um, and usually what I get from an author is I get some kind of a synopsis of their book, which gives me a, a I've had people send me the entire manuscript. I ask them to please not do that. I don't have time. Um, and, and sometimes I don't want to. Um, <laughs> Um, but usually I get a synopsis. I'll usually ask them things like if it's going to be a cover that has a figure on it, I want to know, like hair color, obvious. I don't want to make it a redhead if she's a brunette. Um, and I have one uh, author who will send me like images that kind of evoke what she wants to have on her cover and sometimes I go with those and sometimes I don't. I usually have a conversation with authors to try and feel out and I have fired clients who wanted something specific that was wrong for their book um, and weren't willing to work with me to make it into a marketing thing um, because if you want six um, people from the cast on your cover and you want me to make them all look like specific celebrities that's going to get me in trouble that's going to get you in trouble and I will fire you um, as a client <laughs> so but as far as working directly with an author I like to see I like to get a good feel for what they want but I'm not always going to listen to it and I am going to have that conversation with them about it's a marketing tool it's meant to encapsulate the entire book not a single scene from the book um, as the artist, I never talk to the author. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a great deal. I, I, yes. I do everything through the editor, and I assume the editor and the author have talked and know what they want, and then the editor communicates that to me. As far as like what I get, I always ask for the full manuscript, and I read every one completely, at least once, sometimes twice. <laughs> but... Uh, and that's just because as, a, as an illustrator, uh, you know, a synopsis gives me a general idea of, a, of a, what's happening, of a character, of a scene, of a plot. But with those details, I always feel like I get a very general sort of cover. And what I want to do as a cover artist is really see myself in that in that story and to do that I need to see details that weren't in the synopsis you know so I really and and I try really hard to get some of those details in the picture so I pride myself in that you know I, I 
I would be very surprised if an author ever looked at one of my covers that I did for them and wondered if I read their book. I think they'd know right away that I've actually read the book. And that's very important to me. And so, and as far as like talking to the author and the editor, I I don't initially talk too much. You know, generally they tell me what they kind of want and what they're looking for. And, but I figure everything they need to tell me should be in the manuscript. And that's what I go with. And I try, I, I read it very carefully with great respect. And, uh, and then I just try to put myself in that world and give a good strong picture full of detail that is it? anyway um, so working as a cover artist I would encourage you to think more along those lines you know the kind of you as an artist I wouldn't worry too much about the marketing and the things like that because the the people you're working with, with with will kind of guide you when needed in those areas you know and they're a little closer to it than you ever will be uh, so I would encourage you as an artist to just put your energy into really understanding the story and uh, giving it the best picture you can possibly do and listen to their feedback when they give it and respect that as well. But, you know, don't concern yourself too much with, you know, is this going to fit into the market and everything? Because hopefully, hopefully they've thought about that and hired you because of their thought on that issue. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Okay. Just touching on what you just said, okay, so you've read the manuscript. Are you trying to depict a moment from the book or maybe the basic feel of the whole book? You've read it. What do you choose to put on that cover? Or, or, yeah. you, or are you just trying to pull in the readers of fantasy or science fiction or horror or whatever yeah. that genre happens? It depends. It depends. What I do is I read the manuscript as I'm reading. I just have a pen. And as I notice a, 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 a scene or a situation that might visually, I think might make a strong picture visually, I'll just on the back of that page of the manuscript scribble out my first initial thumbnail of that idea of what I think and make a note of the scene. Uh, and as I'm reading too, I'll also make notes of like uh, visual details that the author has, you know, specifically mentioned, uh, whether, you know, costumes or, you know, physical features of characters, just so I don't miss anything. <laughs> So I do that, and then, so when I get done reading a manuscript, I, I have a, you know, stack of sometimes 10 or 12 possible images, and they're just roughly scribbled out with some notes about the, because sometimes when, some, I write notes because sometimes by the time I get to the end of the manuscript, I can't make sense of that scribble anymore. <laughs> uh, so I just have to have a note of what the scene was. And then I look at them and I think about it again, and then I usually go back and I carefully reread that section of the manuscript again, and then I start to do a composition of it. And this time I slow down a little bit and you know, I, I'll still working quickly, but I'll roughly rough out a real composition of all those scenes and just look at them and see which one compositionally has the strongest feel to it, to it, you know, which I think I can make a composition around with the strongest impact. It's just a visual thing for me often. And, uh, and then if I'm doing that, it's sometimes, so I, I, I try to work with scenes because I like just doing that, but occasionally there isn't any one scene that seems to capture the, the feel of the book or capture enough of it. And then sometimes I'll kind of incorporate parts from another scene into just an image, you know, just more like a poster image where it's got elements from different parts of the book. And sometimes that'll work. But in the end, I'm just pushing on all those and just trying to compose them and just eventually one starts to come out as just the strongest image. And when I say a strong composition, it's just an abstract thing. It just has a visual like grab, like it might just be a, the, the main character might just have a really interesting silhouette or there might be an interesting action thing that creates a nice silhouette. There might be a... You know, if there's a monster in the book, that's always good to stick in there. And if you can do that, you know, I I don't know if this is being very helpful, but it's just from experience, you have a sense of what a strong composition is, and you're just <clears throat> fighting to get that one, you know? Because I, I don't know if that's helpful at all, but that's kind of how I do it. It's just a lot of ideas. And then you try to develop them a little, and you go, some fall by the wayside, and others remain strong, and eventually you end up with one or two that are pretty cool. But Cedar, you didn't read the book. You read what they sent you. How do you approach it? 
I don't usually read the books because frequently um, I am designing a cover for a book that's a couple hundred thousand words long and I don't have time. I will often read um, a few chapters of it, but I, I don't like them to send me the whole manuscript. Um, so I'm working usually from something that's a little bit shorter, but because of what I'm doing, I'm the art is important, but for me, it's more about the marketing. I need the the art on the cover and the overall design of it to signal um, it needs to be a strong composition. It needs to jump off the page and catch the eye, but you don't want to have a cover that signals something that the book isn't. So when the reader picks it up and opens it up and starts to read, they're not disappointed. Um, if you have a book that doesn't have any romance in it at all, having a female figure centrally flanked by a man is a bad idea because people, they that's romantic. Um, it can be done, and it can be done compositionally, um, but you have to be very careful with it as an artist. So I'm not a traditional artist like Brett is. I'm usually, when I'm doing cover art, I'm doing photo bashing and um, compositing. So I'm using um, existing elements. I do um, add enough of my original work to it that it's a, a unique image, an original image, but I specialize a lot more in science fiction exploding spaceships sort of thing. So there's not usually a human figure in there, um, unless I do what I call floating heads. Um, and But I'm more concerned about the, the marketing market value of the cover as an overall design. Um, and what you do is fantastic and amazing, but um, uh, for me, what I'm usually working with are people with smaller budgets that need their book to sell well, and I'm working with a lot of different genres. So I last thing I should say that I've been doing what I do for a long time, and people have a certain expectation of what they're going to get from me, and I'm only only offered a certain type of book. You know, no one's going to ask me to do a romance cover. You know, it's, just, it's not going to happen. So, you know, so how much would you charge for a romance? Cover? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, you have to, every situation is going to be a little bit different. So I think that, you know, like, just because I say I read the manuscript doesn't mean that's the only way to do it, you know, because Cedar's doing a different type of work and handling different type of clientele. And so listen to both of us and then assess what you need to do when the job comes to you. Well, some Does of it that make sense? Some of it depends on what you are as far as are you a publisher, are you an author, are you an author that's going to be working directly with your artist, or are you going to be working through a publisher to the artist? So there's a, a trail of people between you and the cover. Um, so, and are you an artist that's going to be trying to make art for a cover, or are you an artist that's not only going to be doing the art, but also laying the text on it and doing the whole cover design for it? All of these things, you have to come at it from different approaches. So I don't know if you um, do just the art or if you're also responsible for the text. Uh, I always propose a lettering solution on all my covers, and it's just a proposal, and for me it's more of I, I, I've never, never been satisfied with, you know, I paint a beautiful painting, hopefully, and I send it off, and they stick some type on it, and I'm like, why did you put it there? <laughs> or, you know, maybe the typography's just not. Uh, so I propose a lettering solution, and sometimes they'll let me actually letter it, and it's a whole package, and I'm happy when they do that. But sometimes they, because of marketing decisions and things that they've made, they... They thank me for the idea, and you know, and it, I just have to let it go. But I always propose it. Uh, so that's just kind of, again, as you go along doing a job, you know, hopefully you're uh, working well with the people you're working with. And if you know, if they say we need to go a little di different direction on this, you know, I'm never gonna pout about not getting to do my lettering. You know, it's just not. It's like, all right, you know. I'm, uh, that's good, and sometimes it's good just because I've proposed it in a certain way. What they do fits nicely with what I've done because they kind of set the type similar to the way I lettered it, and it all works out really well. So I like to 
just do that to kind of exercise what control I can on a cover. Mm. But again, just uh, just be easy to work with, and you know when things need to let go, you let them go and let some. And I, I would say if you are illustrating and you want to design a cover take some time and learn a little bit about typography it's not as simple as sticking it up there on their big you know big on the thing and sticking it in an empty spot on the picture there's all kinds of subtlety in the letter spacing and the spacing between the you know the rows of let the letting between the rows of type and it's a real art and and it's a subtle thing that most people don't see, but when you see the difference between something mediocre and something really beautiful, you can really feel it, even if you can't pinpoint where it is. So if you want to design your own covers and put t type on it, just there's a great book called Thinking, in, Thinking with Type by Ellen Lupton. I'd encourage you to start reading there and just learn a little bit about typography and how it works, because it's a, it's a real art and a craft in it of its own. And What's that book title again? It's called Thinking, it's either Thinking in Type or Thinking with Type. By? Ellen Lupton. That's a great book. Okay. And that, and that um, I'm going to jump in real quick here about font choices because as I do work in so many different genres, <clears throat> a swirly, cursive, lovely, elaborate font should never go on a science fiction book. And <coughs> vice versa, a blocky, grungy, weird angles font should never go on a romance book. Um, different subgenres need a different font and everything, and if you don't have the privilege of having someone that can do your lettering for you, um, it, it, font choices can make or break, and I'm going to say something kind of heresy here in front of an artist. I, I would rather see a cover that's blank with really great font and words than a cover that looks like your three-year-old drew it. <laughs> So, I mean, I've seen some really awful covers, and, and sometimes maybe it's best just to not do art if you're trying to do it yourself and you can't have it done properly and professionally. Okay. Um, let's, uh, we'll start down here with Jason. Where is it that you go to find cover artists? And for the artists, where do people go to find someone like you? How is that? So when I'm looking for a cover artist, uh, the first thing I do is go to Diagonale. And I have to get there now. I'm, just um, <laughs> I'm like, is this a weird new social media no. place I have? <laughs> that would be cool. I, I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I don't know about no, that. Um, <laughs> so as a smaller press, a lot of what we do is through networking. Um, we we have a few cover artists that we kind of become our go-to people, um, but we haven't been you know above purchasing pre-made covers as well. Um, there's some really great stuff out there that's going to cost more, you know, um, but some of that some of that's great stuff. Um, also, a lot of those uh, sites you can contact the artist directly and have them do something custom for you. Um, so. We don't really have in-house artists, but we have a group that we we frequently go to. If I was a if I was an author starting out, I probably would check out some of the the higher end pre-made cover sites, and then again, if you want something custom, contact the author or artist. So one quick caveat on that with the pre-made cover sites: I have a friend who's an author, and he got bit really hard using a cover off a pre-made cover site because the same cover w appeared on a different book, and then they came after him because he was using their covers. So. That's why you want to do oh, vet them. You yes. know, don't don't just go with the cheapest option because you can get in trouble. But uh, any reputable site that upsells cover art, um, they won't do that. They won't resell it. And then, you know, so. That's, Is there a specific website you're talking about? Like, um, there's several. Design. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but if you Google, you can find some. And just go look at the reviews for the site. Um, a lot of times that will be your best guide is previous customers. Um, but yeah, that's how we do things. Um, maybe it's not how the bigger people do it, but uh, yeah, so. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to ask a uh, question? A or? site that you can find them is F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Okay, be very careful yeah, with fibers. You have to be careful with it, but you can find good, good there, so. Bookcovercreator.com is actually one where they, they vet it, and they make every artist that does it 
also sign an agreement, and they do legally go after people if you try to sell two covers. I mean, I, I know of an artist who did that. It will be under him because that was, I think, by the end of all of a sudden, that was five thousand dollars in legal fees. Yeah. So they, they they do enforce their contracts. So what was the name of that site again? Bookcovercreator.com. Okay. Um, another thing with Fiverr, the uh, you're going to wade through an awful lot of amateurs. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and if you use their, you can put a proposal out and artists can respond, but most of the people that respond are not actual artists. They're like people that do other things relating to art, but not really painting or, or anything. A good thing about using a site like Fiverr is that they escrow the money. So if the artist disappears or delivers something that is completely not what was agreed upon beforehand, they don't run away with your money. Um, there's another site called Artists and Clients. Um, that works that way as well, where you, you put it all into escrow. And for the artist, they know that the money is there um, and that the, uh, that the author is not going to run, you know, uh, make them do a bunch of work that doesn't get used or doesn't get paid for. Um, I also use the job boards at DeviantArt oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, you post it there, and then people will post stuff from their portfolio. Um, there's just a huge community of artists. Again, you'll get responses from a wide variety of, of quality of artists, but also a wide variety of prices. Mm -hmm. And speaking of prices, what can authors expect to pay? Just real quick, okay. ArtStation's another great place to go. So. Okay. Sorry. All right. But now you must answer my question. How much <laughs> can authors expect to pay for a, for a cover? Well, <laughs> it just really depends. Um, you On can, what, Jason? Well, um, if you have a publisher, zero. <laughs> right. If you're if you're publishing through a publisher, you shouldn't be paying anything for production. And uh, if you are, it's a problem. If you are, it's a predatory publisher, and you should probably get away from that. But um, we've it really can run the gamut. Um, I don't know. Uh, I've gotten quotes that were two grand, you know. Um, and also you can find some new talent in places like DeviantArt who are trying to build their portfolios and they can do it for $300, $500. Um, it just depends. So it just really depends where you go and who you're talking to and also what kind of book you're trying to, to market. Um, a lot of the, if you want something painted like custom, so like maybe you've got a high fantasy and you want you know, something high concept, not high concept, but something really beautiful, uh, you're gonna pay a lot more than if it's something that's a romance novel, because there's a lot of pre-made romance covers that look good, actually, and, and you can you can use, so. But that's, does that answer the question, or? No, we're gonna keep going. Um, so, <laughs> like, not don't give us a hard quote, but like a price range of well, what people can expect. I just work with publishers, so I wouldn't, I've never done anything for an independent author or self-publisher or something, so I generally have a four thousand dollar minimum on a on a cover, and sometimes I can get quite a bit more. Uh, sometimes, you know, and if they are down around the four thousand range, I just decide whether I like the book enough to do it, you know. And uh, so it, it just all depends. But there's a little range. I've I've been paid as much as. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think. Usually, the average is somewhere between four and like seven, seventy-five hundred. It's okay. kind of the average range of a cover. Okay. What chime in? Uh, before we go, you had a question. Sorry, are your style is it is it like brand new blank canvas? You make it up, or are you like photo manipulating? Is I don't do anything in Photoshop. Okay. Just a painter. Got it. So, yeah. And those are going to run more expensive. Yes. But it's quality work. It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and which leads into what I'm going to say. So I write for a blog called Mad Genius Club, which is a blog for writers, by writers. We've had long discussions about cover art and finding cover artists, finding reliable cover artists. Um, and in amongst the discussions, we've all discussed what we paid for art. Um, I, I What I charge for art is a... Um, thing, well, I, I say I charge for art. I charge for a cover because I only do covers. Um, I 
my personal art is totally separate from what I do for covers. Um, and so in discussing this, the lot of us, which includes some traditionally published authors, indie authors, hybrid authors, um, we've come up with covers can be anywhere from about $35 to several thousand dollars. And it really depends on if you're going to a site like Fiverr and you're getting a $35 cover, um, which yeah, um, it, it, all the way up to having blank canvas painting that is from your book for your book, um, and it's. It, so it's extremely variable, um, and if you're working on a budget, it can absolutely be done. Um, as a matter of fact, you can do it for free yourself if you're persistent. Um, but there's certainly, for anyone that's starting out as an author, trying to buy their own cover art and design, it, you can do it. It's, it's not going to cost you several thousand dollars, and probably for your very first book, it shouldn't because you won't make that money back. Okay. Um, and yeah, for the other commercial um, full-time artists, painters that I have met, I've got a neighbor that paints about half the covers for Hard Case Crime. Um, he starts at about two grand. Uh, but if you're willing to do an awful lot of emailing, you can hire somebody in Russia for 400 bucks or Malaysia or somewhere. It'll do a digital painting. You won't have, it'll look different, but it's... And you can mm -hmm. actually find someone that's um, international that's even less than that. And right, still does you, you can. Fabulous work. Um, James is you, trying not to say something. <laughs> uh, but it, again, it's good to vet those artists because you don't know. Um, yeah. What's going to. Go ahead. So, question more for the publishers, but what's the deal breaker for you? What behavior that you see from authors or artists means that you just cancel the contract with them right away? Well, so when we give the author's input, it's actually kind of a courtesy on our part. Our contract doesn't stipulate that we have to give them any kind of input with the, with the cover. We're just trying to work with them and, and be cooperative. So if we wanted to be, you know, letter of the law and, and mean, we could just say, here's your cover, you know, deal with it. Uh, that's not a very good business model, especially if you're trying to attract new authors. Um, but I don't, I don't think we'd cancel a... A contract. Well, <laughs> actually, um, <laughs> so yeah, um, I've never had to cancel a contract because of the artist. Let's just put it that way. Um, are you asking about what, what, what uh, canceling an artist contract or an author's contract? Uh, canceling an artist, be it um, what kind of behaviors? Is yeah, what behavior on the artist side would cause the author to cancel a contract? What kind of behavior on the author side can would I, cause the artist to cancel? Can I just say something from that, uh, from an artist's point of view? Yeah. Uh, as you go forward in your artistic endeavors, uh, be easy to work with. It'll serve you. Far better than any prima donna nonsense, you know. That you're you're working with people. They've got their stresses. They've got their things they're worrying about, and you've got yours. And just find a way to work with them, you know. And that's why I say, just if uh, changes need to be made, as long as they're not, you know, completely redo this thing, just 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 be easy to work with. Just work with them and try to try to make them happy and uh, just. General courtesy will take you a long ways, I think. So. I, the so, to I don't know from a publisher's yeah. point of view. I, I could speak to it from both sides of it. So, a, as an author, the reason that I wound up doing cover art and design was I paid a cover artist and he disappeared. Um, so, I was left with no money and no book cover. And uh, my um, husband paid for me to take Dean Wesley Smith's cover workshop, which I highly recommend if you're going into the industry. Um, so that was obviously behavior from an artist that leads to me, I'm never going to recommend him to anyone or hire him myself again. Um, as an artist, I once had a publisher who um, we had agreed on a design, we had, um, he had approved initial stages, and suddenly I got an email from him being very personal and insulting my work. Um, that may happen to you, don't let it get to you, fire the client, move on. And also along, that, along with being easy to work with, she meant just do what you agree to do, you know, if you, 
if you agree you're going to have sketches to them on Friday afternoon, have them there by Friday afternoon. Preferably Friday morning would be better. But, you know, don't, don't be the flaky artist. Don't be the prima donna. It will do you really well. It'll take you... It'll just... I know it seems obvious because in most careers it wouldn't ever be a question, but somehow sometimes young creative people think, oh, well, I'm an artist. They'll cut me a little slack on this or that. No, no. Get your work in on time when you say you'll have it there. Okay, well, it looks like, okay, we have like 10 seconds okay, if it's a short seconds, question. I, I'm a writer, and sometimes I'm super protective of my work as an artist. Do you feel that way if, if an, a, a, a writer says, uh, could you maybe fix or change? Do you feel super protective about the art that you've done? If someone comes to me and asks me to make changes within reason, I'll do it. Yeah, I think you have to. I mean, it's, it's one thing if they, if after working hard on a cover, somebody came and wanted a completely conceptually different cover, I'd obviously push back and say, okay, fine, but we got to rework the terms. But if it's just, you know, could you, you know, change your hairstyle a little bit or could you, you know, just little things, you got to respect. That and actually I write into my contract. Um, if there, I will allow up to a certain number of changes and after that I charge for it because it's that much more time. But I have a little bit, little wiggle room built in because the initial might not be quite right. But I, I will say that I do very detailed sketches that I present and so... Anything an artist can do to set up a situation where the client can see clearly what they're going to get and not be be too surprised with the finished work, that's really good. Because I'm not often asked to make changes because the approved sketch is all the details are there. Sometimes there might be a little color change or something. But. Okay. I work hard with that. Uh, everybody, please thank our wonderful panelists and thank you for coming.